Welcome. Today I'm going to talk about those obnoxious Richter scale problems that you get when you're dealing with logarithms and probably in Algebra 2 or some high school college math. Anyway, um, the first thing you sort of have to understand is how the Richter scale works. Incidentally enough, most of the measurements that you see for um, earthquakes and things in the U.S. aren't actually measured in Richter anymore. That's just like a FYI scenario. They still use it in other places, but the United States tends to use something else. And you can go research it and find out what the letters mean and all that stuff. But anyway, who cares about that in this lesson? The reality is uh, Richter actually measures magnitude. And I'm going to do this once, pop, pop. And I'm not going to ever do that again in, in this video anyway. Um, but as I go up, what I'm looking at is a change in magnitude. What I'm really measuring is a change in energy intensity. Uh, the way that it was set up uh, originally when Richter was creating it with CI, uh, at CIT, and some other help, um, but he gets the credit, uh, he picked a generic uh, specific arbitrary amount of energy, and then he uh, looked on, on the seismograph just how much it would take. So you can actually have negative Richter, um, or negative numbers in the Richter scale. And when he went up, he looked at the change, and the standard change would be uh, a mag uh, amount of intensity of 30 to the something. So as you go up, what you're really doing is raising, in a, in a base 10-ish way, times 30 to the first power for intensity, times 30 to the second for intensity. So what I'm technically measuring is the magnitude, uh, but I may look at it from a energy intensity standpoint. Long story short, a 3 is a whole lot less than a 4. Um, and what we do uh, in terms of comparisons is we sort of think like, okay, well, I want to make a comparison between one earthquake's Richter uh, reading and another uh, earthquake's Richter reading. So let's look at the upper ends of these things. That would be more fun than looking at the bottom that you could barely feel. So let's say we have one that's 9.1. 9.1 generally means that you're going to have uh, total, like, massive permanent topography changes, just destruction. You're looking at something like a minimum of 50,000 deceased. Um, and then let's go just down to 7.8. And that change may be, doesn't seem like much, but, I mean, you're talking about probably a max number uh, generally of deceased 250,000 with general, uh, with an average amount of people in one area, like if you're a large city, it'll change. But you'll look at damage to buildings, but it may not, it's not as devastating as a 9.1. Let's just look at them. What we just, what, uh, has been determined in terms of figuring it out is if I just take uh, the log of the intensity of the first one divided by the intensity of the second one, that relates out in real terms to a log of or the magnitude of the first one minus the magnitude of the second, and then I can work it all the way down. So what I'm going to deal with here is uh, 9.1 minus 7.8. That way I can make an easier move than trying to go through and doing all the divisions. I could just do the subtraction. So I get that in, and it gives me 1.3, which doesn't seem like much until you think, well, hey, wait a second. It's not nothing, that's for sure. Uh, so when I have this log here, what log means is it's 10 to the something. So to get the final answer of what this actually is, I need to take 10 to the 1.3 power. So I take 10 and raise it to 1.3, and I find out that it's somewhere in the general vicinity of 19.95. Uh, so around 20. So if the question generally when it's set up is how many more times intense was one earthquake than the other? 20 times the intensity. That's a lot. Um, so the difference between, you know, in the first case, total destruction to a lot of destruction, I guess. Uh, so that's the Richter scale problems. Just do the subtraction between the two and then uh, figure out uh, raise 10 to that power and you can find out what the change in overall intensity for those two earthquakes would be.